Chefs About Town is brought to you in part by Loxton De-Alcoholized Wines, the elegant alternative wine for your non-drinking guests who enjoy the taste of wine. Remember Loxton. And by Summer Hill Estate Winery, BC's first champagne house from the pristine Okanagan Valley in beautiful British Columbia. Your celebration deserves purity. Both proud sponsors of British Columbia's regional food and wine program, Chefs About Town. Mitch Laser on guitar, James Hill on sax. Thanks, guys. My name is Gary Fessler. Welcome again to Chefs About Town, the show for people who really love good food. And uh, my guest today is Grant Tamandre from the Eldorado, Hotel Eldorado Hotel in Dorado. Kelowna. Yep. Yeah, thanks for being here, man. Thanks for Thank driving you. all the way down from Kelowna just to be in my Vancouver kitchen studio to uh, prepare some wild boar. Wild boar. Yeah. As per the, uh, the Hanley dinner? Uh, now, yeah, uh, I was up a little while ago uh, filming with my camera crew and uh, we did a special library tasting dinner. Why don't you just explain a little bit what that's about? Well, we've been working for the last couple of years with uh, Tillman and Sondra Hanley at Hanley Vineyards. Right. In Peachland. Uh, in Peachland. In the Okanagan, yes. yeah. And uh, they, they came to me and they wanted to put together a meal for uh, well, people who are interested in their wines yeah. and so on. And, uh, we uh, work quite close together. I uh, I get right there with with Sandra and Tillman. We and figure out the which wines taste and, the wine, which yeah. food is going to go with right. this, come up with the proper matches, Fantastic. and uh, we do seven courses um, usually. And it was a great evening, actually. It was a fantastic evening. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing this show. Okay, this was the the main course of the um, of the dinner that night: wild boar chops. Right. Um, we serve them with a smoked onion tart, which has a herb crust. It smells great. Yeah. Marvelous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prepared this in advance. But, yeah. uh, it's just a herb crust with uh, smoked onions, which we smoked ourselves. Just. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so there's some rosemary in there, a little Parmesan, et cetera, et cetera. It's simple, but, you know, he says just, but it's fantastic. <laughs> it's really delicious. Let now, me... now uh, Fred and Mary Went oh, are, more. are the people who who uh, raise the wild boar in the Okanagan, uh, just, I think, out, just outside of Okanagan Falls, right, if yeah. I remember from when yeah, we were their, there. their address is all over, but I think they're closer to something like Olala, yeah. I believe is the name but of it's, the it's like this, it's like, it's like this hidden valley uh, yeah. someplace, and it's, it's an amazing spot, absolutely gorgeous, and, well, listen, uh, uh, I'd rather you see the film and, uh, and, let, and let Fred Went speak about his uh, wild boar farm himself. So let's take a look at that and we'll be right back. Fred, uh, thanks for having me here at, the, uh, at, at your ranch called the Surprise Ranch. You raise wild boar, you have, we can see your ranch behind us and it's breathtaking. Uh, how many heads of uh, boar do you have? We usually have at least 500 on the property. And the property consists of how many acres? About 48 acres. Yeah. 48? Mm -hmm. It was like everything we can see? Yes, most of the green stuff that you see. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, what is your? Why did you start raising boar in the beginning? Well, I simply like the meat. Uh, I vaguely remember it from being a child in Europe. W where are you from? I'm from Germany myself, mm -hmm. and uh, I just simply uh, thought it'd be a good idea. Uh, yeah. Whether or not it could be marketed didn't enter our minds at the time. Well, how long ago was that? This was 1978. 78? So you've yes. been at it since 1978? That's right, yeah. Wow. And you started with how many? In a boar? very small scale, of course. At first, we started with only two pairs. Two? Yeah. 
and 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 uh, now you're up to you say 500 uh, 600? usually around 500 yes um, what is your um, philosophy of, or your 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 objective in raising the boar how do you raise them well we like to uh, raise them somewhat the same way as they would be in the wild and this is mostly the diet that makes the difference and of course the fact that they have lots of exercise uh, well because they certainly have a lot of room to, uh, to nowadays to that type of thing is a no-no in modern farming because of the fact it wastes calories mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, we think we end up with a much healthier animal and therefore, looking at, therefore a much healthier product. You're not looking at a fatter uh, animal, you're looking at no. a, a leaner animal, no. aren't you? No, yes. So you want them to, 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 to walk around, run That's around right. a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you feed them, um, you don't just feed them grains, you feed them We do fruits. feed them, basically they get, a, they get grain, but it's uh, pure grain, uh, just straight rolled barley. But other things too, though, and besides they get, the grain. Uh, they get green chopped feed in the summertime and hay in the winter. They get uh, lots of fruit in the summertime. Being the Okanagan, that's ideal. Uh, starting with cherries and cherry pits through uh, apricots and peaches, particularly the stone fruits they like. Why is that? Because they like to crack all the stones and eat the seeds. Oh, really? And, and I, guess, uh, I guess that's good for them. It is good for them. But that's what they would do in the wild. That's what they would do in, in the forests in Europe and Asia where they get these nuts off the trees. Now, pine, pine nuts and acorns and... Beach Something nuts. else you do is you don't castrate the males. No, we do not, uh, because again, because we want to end up with a product that is somewhat the same as, as a, you as would get wild. if you were hunting yourself an animal in, in the wild. When when uh, when when some other people would would uh, castrate uh, a pig, would it uh, it would w w the meat's more mild, isn't it? Yes, you know. In fact, uh, because of the fact that uh, domestic pigs, when they're slaughtered, they're usually only about six months old. If you have a, a boar in there, an uncastrated animal, he would be pretty high. Uh, probably be right. just in the a juvenile male. Uh, he'd be pretty. Um, in fact, they get thrown out by the ins meat inspectors. Why? Because you can't you can't really eat the meat. It's kind of off flavor. It is, eh? Yes. In fact, we had to have special permission to be able to get these animals slaughtered in the sla in the inspected slaughterhouses. Sounds like you've had a heck of a time uh, yes, we have. doing this, uh, raising raising these yeah. boars. There are, all kinds, the red there are all kinds of prejudices against them. Uh, one of the things we think about these animals is that they're environmentally the thing to have because they're very clean animals. Mm -hmm. Most people who don't know pigs think they're dirty, but these are not, and especially these ones because they do not eat as much. They grow slower than domestic pigs. And, uh, well, as you can tell, the place doesn't smell like a pig farm. So it sounds like there are some politics involved as well as yes, uh, being yes. being a farmer. But you're also a cook, and 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 well, you, that's, you, you I have suppose some... that's the reason we got into it because we <laughs> like good love, food. We love good food, which is what my show is all about. And right. here we have some. Now, obviously, this is bacon. Now, from this the is boars. bacon, and that is bacon from the female. As you can see, it is fairly fat, but it mm -hmm. is very tasty bacon. Uh, most people that uh, taste it say that they uh, haven't tasted bacon like that, although it tends to be somewhat fatter. And this, this stew looks... This is fantastic. a goulash recipe, which uh, the variation wow. with the Hungarian goulash is that we use prefer marjoram rather than paprika in it, although it is very nice with paprika. But this meat uh, is... No, you're giving all your secrets away. It's terrific for <laughs> uh, that type of dish, uh, stews and uh, stews with vegetables. We have even. a pâté. We make pâtés uh, mostly for our own use, but we sell some to local customers with our liver pâtés and what we call a smoked pâté. Oh, I think I might liberate some from you before I go. Yes. Um, we have this over here. This it's is a, a, this is a uh, cured ham that's been done for us in Kelowna, and this is from a male, again, probably at least four years old. And uh, you'll be able to tell later that it's quite nice and tender, and if you know what to look for, you can tell that it is a male, but... Uh, Otherwise, you uh, wouldn't know. This is exactly what you want, just a suggestion yeah. of it. Okay. The sausages, just, those look great. Well, those are frying sausages that we make with our trim, and well, we get it made by an expert sausage maker. And they have maker. a wonderful flavor, there, and you were saying that there, there's mostly male meat in that, in yes, that as well. Yes, yes, we, we have to add some fat from the females to it because you have, can't make good sausages with without a, a certain fat, amount of fat you in it. Bet. And on the other side, at the end of the table, no, we this have is a, butt roast? This is a butt roast that we did just this morning from a boar. And uh, again, uh, we did a slight bit of marinating with it, uh, just with some... I had rubbed some uh, juniper berries on it and poured a little brandy over it, and that's <laughs> about hungry. the only marinating it got. Listen... And the, the yes. best thing to go with it is, is sweet and sour red cabbage. We don't forget the red cabbage. 
and it's very German. It's by far the best great, vegetable to go with this. Great kind of combination, absolutely classic combination. We're going to go back to Vancouver and cook with Grant, some of your boar. Thanks for taking out uh, some of your time and chatting You're with welcome. us, Fred. You're welcome. It's nice having you. Thank you very much. Hey, cheers. <laughs> Okay, now we better get cooking. So, you have to get cooking. as I say, yeah. Okay. We're gonna prepare the wild boar. Yeah. Uh, first step. Want this fire on? Yeah, we could do some heat. Oh, okay. wait. We'll just what? hold off on a second. Okay. And uh, we're gonna put this in the oven. Pop this in the oven. Okay. Now this is at 300 degrees. Yeah. We put this. Just, just to reheat. Just it. gonna warm it. Okay. Now we can't get into how to do the uh, the pie. We just kind of ran through it quickly. Yeah. It was, okay. Uh, it's a. It's a herb crust, right? Uh, with parmesan and garlic in it. Okay. Uh, we wow. smoke the onions. Yeah. And uh, they're red onions. Put okay. some rosemary in there. Yeah. We put those. Line the, uh, the the flan with yeah. that. Some eggs. Uh, eggs and cream. Right. And just a royal. It's like a quiche. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, just yeah. like a quiche. But the crust alone sounds good yeah. enough. But anyway, okay. Holds. Okay. Real simple. Right. Um, I I tend to stay on the simple side when I'm preparing right. things. And peppercorns, I have some five berry peppercorns here that I'm gonna... Are you gonna take out some frustration on these peppercorns yeah. here? Okay, yeah. go, go for it. I prefer doing the peppercorns this way. Okay. I'm crushing them. I have a pepper mill, but no, 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 he has to do it this way. I like it this yeah. way. Yeah. I saw here. the pepper mill. Actually, this is great if you want these on. Okay, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and sprinkle these on here. Okay, do you want the... Uh, okay, we can, put we can have on. some heat now. Okay, put the fire on. I'm going to push the pepper, peppercorns into the, into meat. the meat. And uh, we have uh, wild boar loin chops here. Do you have any oil in this or anything? Or? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. We're Just, getting to that point. Okay. And uh, we're getting to that point right now. Okay. Just going to take a little oil. Uh, a little How salt hot do you want the this. pan? Oh, it can be pretty hot. Okay. That's going to be pretty hot. Little, a little sea salt. A little salt. Okay. Okay. That's, we're ready. I think so. Yeah. I think I think the pan's uh, rocking. Yeah. You hear that sizzle? I love yeah. that sound. Love that sound. Oh yeah. That's that. Now, how long do we let this cook for? Um. Yeah. Towel. 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 I'm okay. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brown it lightly on, in here. Right. And then I'm going to put it in the, it in the oven to finish it. Okay. It should take about 10 to 15 minutes Okay. at that point. Okay. And uh, the, the tart will be ready then. We'll pull everything out. Right. We'll saute the wild mushrooms that I have here. Now, what kind of wild mushrooms are these? Well, they're forest mushrooms. It's a, it's a dry uh, mix that I buy. Really? There's about seven or eight different varieties Ooh. in there. These are pungent. Trumpet mushrooms. Trump are, these are the trumpets here. Yeah. They're incredibly pungent. Yeah. Lots of lots of flavor there. Um, I like using fresh. Um, mm. Up in the Okanagan right now, I couldn't get any fresh local mushrooms to go right. with local board. Right. So but the night that we did the um, the Hanley dinner, yeah. we used uh, fresh wild mushrooms. There was about 60 people there. Yep. It was a nice sized room. It was a small room. You have a special dining room yeah, the area roundhouse. that the roundhouse you call it. Yeah. That's actually outside of the the main yeah. hotel. That was the uh, original building on the property. No Belonged kidding. To the doctor, they it was like their summer house. And wow. uh, we decided to turn into a bank. And, and it worked beautifully because it's just the right amount of people. I think about how many people were there. Do you remember? Uh, Fifty people. Yeah, plus I, I couple, thought plus 60. a couple. I think. Yeah, yeah, um, plus a couple. <laughs> and uh, the wine is right. What, what we're drinking right now is uh, a very rare wine. It's actually we stole this from Tillman yeah. kindly, and this is one of his Merlots. Yeah, his Merlot. And it's the eighty-eight Merlot. It's the eighty-eight. Thank There's you. There's about uh, one case of this left. He says, often Meiji is year 2000. I was talking to him today. He thinks only about two bottles will make it that long. Mm. And it is stunning. If you have a chance to grab any of uh, Tillman Heinley's wines, do so. His reds are absolutely stellar. His whites are wonderful. We're stirring this now. So we'll just flip on the other side. Now, when do we add the, uh, the, the mushrooms? That's going to be after it comes out of the oven. Okay, let's pop this in the oven. Fine, right? Now this is cooked for how long again? At 300? We're talking about uh, about 10 to 15 minutes. 
Hold on. Oh, okay, that's all right. We can just leave it like that. It's not going to quite. Uh... So I'll just hold this closer. here. <laughs> and uh, listen, uh, I had an opportunity to uh, film the, uh, the 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 dinner we the were dinner? talking you about. You were there. Yeah, the library tasting dinner. Snuck into the kitchen with us. And before the dinner, I had a chance to sit down and talk to Tillman Honey, which was amazing because he had this incredible dinner to uh, to to host just before our conversation, and he was kind of wound up, but he was a great guy. And uh, well. Take a look at the film, and we'll see you back in about uh, seven minutes. And their chairs sing. What is this? You know. Well, look at the color too. It's very intense. So you're you're saying that that when the riesling, when 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 you put the riesling out to the public, that uh, this riesling that we're enjoying now, that that they were people were were kind of. A little surprised well, because it, it's so bone dry, and and the color too. It's a, it's, it's a beautiful uh, dark straw color, which is a little unusual. Well, we when we put out our wines, we we started from the philosophy that we wanted to make the wines the way we enjoy them ourselves, mm -hmm. and then we would go out and find other people who enjoy those same wines, and a marketing. Wow person would tell you that's completely I know, I know, backwards. I think as an artist, I th you know, you, 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 you have to do what you do best and not try to, and, and not try to, to, to copy uh, another one's style, uh, whether, it, whether it's, it's, it's another winery or, or, or another appellation in the world, you know, another, another area like California, uh, uh, a reasoning from the Rhine or, or, or California Chardonnay. Well, that's, that's what we believe, yeah. and, uh, but when we put those wines out, there were, I mean, we got uh, tagged with adjectives that were pretty strong, like uh, stubborn and uh, makes dry Rieslings with a capital D, uh, um, headstrong, uh, individualistic. And there's, there's still uh, a lot of people, when they, when they taste a Riesling, they're expecting it to be sweet, and they like that. A lot of people like a sweeter wine. Right. Some people still like a sweeter wine. And I guess they're, they're really taken uh, uh, a little uh, by surprise when they taste yours. But this isn't just true with the Riesling. I, I think that this, this, this style of a very bold, intense, uh, varietal character um, and, and uh, the wines are very sincere wines, they're very honest wines, and they're, uh, they're often finished quite dry, <laughs> um, unusually dry. Always now, dry. I think that, that uh, of all the winemakers I know in British Columbia, and there are some, you know, we have so, so many good ones, yes. but if it was a blind tasting, I think that I could tell your wines over anyone else's because you have such a strong s signature with your wines, uh, and just as I described them, very intense, varietal character, uh, bone dry, almost austere sometimes. Yes. Why is that? Why do you? I mean, obviously, this is why. Do you feel that 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 uh, that these wines, the grapes that are grown here in the Okanagan, are? are this is the way that they should be finished? I'm, I'm not saying that this, this is necessarily the, the best style for, for these grapes from the Okanagan, but it is what we want to make out of right. them. And I think it's, it's near the top end of the potential of what those grapes can yield. Right. And with us, it's all tied in with, with one thinking of trying to keep the wines as pure and natural as possible. Right. So this year we finally moved to organic production in the vineyards. We, we, were, we were able to keep our cellar uh, techniques down to a minimum. Mm -hmm. So if something doesn't need to be done to the wine, we don't, we don't do have it. to Just do it. Just leave it alone. And yeah. uh, the the result is this. Right. Well, and, you are, and your philosophy also, as you say, it includes uh, small yield. You, you you only have 18 acres, I believe, at your winery in Peachland. Right. Uh, uh, high small yield, uh, high quality, intense varietal character, often bone dry, delicious wines. Uh, listen, we we're running a bit out of, out of time because you've got to get back in, into the hotel, the whole hotel uh, El Dorado, and, and uh, talk to Chef uh, about the upcoming dinner. And uh, I really thank you for taking time out and, and sitting with me and chatting a little bit for our viewers at home. And, looking uh, forward to it. Yeah, I hope thanks. you enjoy the thanks, dinner. Thanks, Tillman. Cheers. Some local grapes here, and we uh, 
We puree them and put some little uh, sugar syrup. <laughs> For those of you who may be wondering why it's called a library tasting, it's not because we're going to um, have it in a library or fling books at you. Um, it's because most of the wines uh, that are poured during this evening are po pulled from what we call our wine library. Every time we sell out of a particular wine, we keep a few cases back for special events like this and also to be able to monitor the wine's progress as, as it ages. Uh, so that's why it's called the library tasting. Uh, the other focus, of course, for the evening is the food. And the chef uh, here at Hotel El Dorado, Grant Montreux, has again come up with just a stunning menu. <laughs> Looks great, Grant. You're a real sport letting us in here. <laughs> Bit of an extrovert, you see this? I guess so. If a cameraman came into my kitchen while I was trying to do this, I'd poke him in the nose. <laughs> I'm going to release a world record ice wine. We got it with mm, 57 freaks, mm -hmm. wow. which means 275 Erksley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to think over what you are serving. <laughs> Okay, now let's let's get this out of the oven Alrighty. and uh, see what it looks like. The boar is cooked. The boar. The boar is cooked to about a medium well. Do you want to leave the tart in there? Or? I think we'll leave it in there just until we're okay. Let's uh, have everything else. Let's make ready. sure this is okay. This is off, so we we'll just keep it fine. warm. Yeah. We'll take this out and set it aside. We're going to leave all the pan juices in here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How do you find the uh, the meat? I mean, th this is wild boar, but it's farmed. It's farmed. It yeah. tastes as wild as possible. Yeah, the, it doesn't. It doesn't taste gamey like uh, wild boar you'd okay. expect, or like game. Um, I guess we should say because game doesn't taste like game at all. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, the what the flavors that you do get out of it uh, is he feeds them a lot of apples. I yeah, don't know. I know. Um, and the flavor does come through in the meat. Okay. Uh, when you try it just by itself and so on. Yeah. And uh, the part of the reason we picked this dish was because it has kind of an earthy flavor all the same, even though it's right. not a game meat. It still has some of that. And it goes very well with the uh, with the Merlot. Okay. Is, yeah. Oh, it's going to go great with the Merlot. Yeah. So what do we do next? Okay. We need some heat. Okay. Here. Uh, front burner. Back burner. Which one do you want? That's the back one. Okay. There you go. Good. Perfect. We'll put it on the back burner, far away from us, because uh, we're going to. You're going to flame something. There. You're going to. You're going to. Yeah. Okay. We're going to make fire. Okay. I've chopped up. To take the, the liberty of chopping up the garlic while Good. we were uh, yeah. watching the video right. there. And we'll get that in there. Get that cooking. Okay. And our wild mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, great. Get in there together. Careful. 
Yeah, that is hot. It's been in the oven. This just came out of the oven. Don't do this at home, it hurts. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like cooking it right there in the pan with the juices because right. we're going to deglaze the pan. It's going to lift all those flavors right sure, off. Sure, all those little and, brown and bits. Part and part that into the sauce. Yeah, it's going to be incredibly... Mm. It'll yeah. come out like a jus almost with the wild mushroom. Nice flavor, yeah. yeah. All those little bits that have caramelized from the meat. Okay. And these mushrooms need almost no time at all to cook. Very little. By the time you sear them, saute them, flam them, they're ready. Yep. Okay. You make that look so easy. Okay. A little brandy. Okay. Okay. I cool this away. Stand back now. Wow. Ta da. Special effects. Wow, nice. I, I want to add actually, this is, a, this is a neat thing to do at home, but don't, don't pour from the bottle of brandy. Oh yeah, very right? dangerous. Uh, you saw what Grant did, you know, you, you put it in a little vessel, pour the vessel in, because yeah. if, if, if the uh, liquor ignites, yeah. go into the bottle, it, it, might, it probably won't happen. But, but it's quite possible. It's the quite bottle possible. Will, will go kaboom. You know, and then you'll blame me and... Yeah. I'll be out of business. I saw it on Chefs of Town. No, no, no. <laughs> don't say that. Okay, uh, the only other thing I want to do some is wine. put some uh, red wine in there. Okay. So you do the honors. That's about right. Listen, okay, that's, and, and, and uh, we're just going to let this simmer. Yep. As we do that, we're going to take a short break, and uh, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Kitchen facilities provided by the Debrule French Culinary School. So nice, that's so nice, so sweet. Okay, now we're gonna do, uh, we, we have the chops plated. The chops are there. Well, we're gonna take them off just to reheat them a little bit in okay. the sauce here. What and do we do now? Well, it's, it's time to plate it. So I'm just gonna reheat this. Our chops. Okay. So you just let the chops rest for a while on the plate. Yeah. Just let, let, let them relax and... Relax. Chill out after that uh, tough time in the oven. Well, we wanted to use the same pan so that we could get the, uh, right. get the flavors right. from it. Uh, at this point, we'll pull the tart out. Okay. That's great. Oh, this tart smells so good. I can't wait to tuck into this. I wish I had had time to make it here. Oh, no. Uh, this is wonderful. What you've done is great tonight, really. Okay. Hmm. And the onion tart, the mushrooms, the garlic, the brandy, all of this together, it's going to be the pork, the wild boar, I'm sorry, that's a <laughs> terrible faux pas. The wild boar is, because wild boar and pork are not the same, we should mention this, because a lot of people think it is. They, they are different animals. They're completely yes. different animals. Okay. Let's see these two little pieces over here. Okay. Spoon some of the juices over. Beautiful. Turn off the heat here. Great. So Nathan, we're running out of time, are we? Okay, my floor director, Nathan. Um, great, well listen, while you finish playing that, I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you. Grand de Montre from the Hotel El Dorado. Yeah. In, Up in uh, Kelowna. Kelowna. Up in Kelowna. And listen, this, uh, how many rooms? 20 rooms. All filled with antiques and uh, I know, they're beautiful rooms. Every room is different. Right great, on the lake. Great chef, right on the lake. And uh, listen, we gotta go. My name is Gary Fester for Chefs About Town. Uh, you guys come up here and uh, and uh, swing us out. And until we see you next time, take care, eat well, and drink well. And uh, bye. <laughs>
Remember Loxton. And by Summerhill Estate Winery, BC's first champagne house from the pristine Okanagan Valley in beautiful British Columbia. Your celebration deserves purity. Both proud sponsors of British Columbia's regional food and wine program, Chefs About Town. Chefs About Town, British Columbia's first regional food and wine series, is now available on five VHS video cassettes. Each tape consists of two selected 30-minute programs and easy-to-follow recipe cards for only $16 plus tax. The Chefs About Town video library can be purchased at the following locations.